and you are only educated when you have graduated from Oxford and Cambridge. Now you are educated. But if you have a degree from a Pakistani institution, that's nowhere. It doesn't belong anywhere. This is Pax Britannica. The arrogance of a people claiming a birthright of superiority over the rest of mankind. The arrogance of such a people. It reminds us of a gentleman, no, should I call him gentleman? <laughs> Who said, when Allah asked him, Iblis, why did you not submit? Why did you not make sijda? When I ordered you to do so before Adam alayhi salam, and he responded and he said, I was born superior. I have a birthright of superiority over him. Exactly what a gentleman called Pax Britannica is saying. <laughs> it's arrogance. And there is no place for arrogance in heaven. So get out <laughs> to Iblis. Out you go. This arrogance was then taken to a, via, a higher level in Pax Americana. And now we are waiting to see the big war which is to come, which is necessary for the transition from Pax Americana to the third and last stage. How do I come to this conclusion that there will be only three? Three stages? in this drama for the establishment of a bogus Khilafah and Khilafah meaning the state in which God's law is supreme where Allah's authority is supreme where government is based on truth and truth does not come from CNN truth comes from Allah Uh, our Prophet said, Allah's blessings be upon him. He gave us a timeline of events that you are familiar with now, uh, if you've been listening to me. Uh, it is to be found in the Sunan of Abi Dawood. And uh, the Prophet والسلام, is speaking to his companion, um, Mu'az ibn Jabal. Mu'az ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and he said umranu baytil maqdis kharabu yatrib kharabu yatrib khurujul malhama khurujul malhama fathul constantinia fathul constantinia khurujul dajjal this is the hadith Umran or Bayt al-Maqdis? Bayt al-Maqdis is Jerusalem. Umran or Bayt al-Maqdis, when Maqdis, when Jerusalem is built up, or when Jerusalem is flourishing, or when Jerusalem is at the center stage of history, hmm? occupying a prominent position in the world. At that time, look to Medina. Medina to Manawara. And when you see that Medina is kharab, kharab, broken, it's, it, it occupies no status at all. It is nothing, no way. Or uh, it is, I don't know whether the Malay language has a, an expression like this. It is in a state of forlorn desolation. Come on, tell me in Malay. Come on. You do speak the Malay language, don't you? Yes. Come on. Forlorn desolation. Terbia. Terbia. Okay. Terbia. 
Tabah ho gaya. It's broken up. Then when Medina is in that state, it has no status at all in the world. None. Just a tourist curiosity for Muslims who want to go. That's all. Then at that time, the next event that's going to occur is the Malhama. And it's going to be the biggest war that the world has ever known. How do we know that? Because our Prophet said that 99 out of every 100 who fight in that war will be killed. So there's never been a war like that in history. It'll be the unique war. It cannot be a conventional war because conventional warfare does not kill 99% of combatants. So it has to be a war which will use weapons of mass destruction. What are these weapons? We know about nuclear weapons. We don't know about the rest, which is still secret. When this war takes place, this is the Malhama, 99% of all combatants will be killed. Those who have faith in their heart don't mind to die for the sake of truth. But those who are only fighting for a U.S. green card, that's all. <laughs> we are in the army to get a job. We are fighting in the U.S. army to get promotion, to get skills. We are not here to fight for truth. Oh, no. <laughs> they don't want to die. So for them, there's bad news when they listen to this lecture. There's going to be terror in their hearts. Because they look, who is this man named Muhammad? Tell us something about him. Because this is looking dangerous now. Because what this man is saying is that in this war, there are going to be weapons of mass destruction. And they're going to kill 99% of combatants. If this man, Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him, is speaking the truth, we are in the wrong place at the wrong time to be in the U.S. Army. So there are those who will come to the war unafraid to die. No. And there are others who will come into this war with terror in their hearts. That's where we are today. The war will take place anytime. It can start anytime. When will it start? I don't know. But over the last two years, I've had no less than eight dreams. Eight dreams of nuclear war. And I'm constantly getting emails from people around the world who are saying the same thing. And not only dreams, political analysts, military analysts are all saying the same thing. We are moving towards World War Three. they call it. The Christians call it Armageddon. In Islam, it's known as the Malhama, meaning a war like no war has ever been. And no war will ever be again, the Malhama. Hmm? That's where we are today. Where will this war take place? We have for the first time, and I have to thank Kaisar Darus Salam Academy, that Imran Hussein for the first time is using technology. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I'm so happy. Kaiser Abdus Darus Salam uh, in Damansa. Thank you. We have a screen there. The Quran is a wonderful book for history. Allah speaks in the Quran about a traveler who traveled to the two ends of the land. The Jews wanted to know whether this man in Arabia, a man named Muhammad who says he's a prophet, does he know about it? A traveler who traveled to the two ends of the land. Ask him about it, because only a prophet will know the answer. And Allah sent down the answer in Surah Al-Kahf. And he says, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ They question thee about Zulkarnain, someone 
who will impact on history twice. Karni can mean horn, it can mean an age. But the Quran has never used the word Karn to mean a horn, never. So Zul Karnain is someone who will impact on history twice. He's also someone who has faith in Allah. And he's, so, he's someone who is empowered by Allah with power. And that power is such that he can pursue any effort he chooses to pursue. So be careful, huh? Be careful, huh? If, you live, if you're in the U.S. Armed Forces, you better listen carefully. Why still there is time? He travels in the direction of the setting of the sun until he comes to a body of water. And the Quran describes it as Ainun Hamia, a body of water which is dark and murky, dark and murky. And then he travels in the direction of the rising of the sun to the end of the land. And there, of course, would be another body of water. And then he travels in the third direction, which takes him to a pass between two mountain ranges. And there in that pass, he comes across Gog and Magog. And only a prophet of Allah would know about Gog and Magog. I can assure you, government of Malaysia doesn't know about Gog and Magog. Security Council of the United Nations cannot tell you about Gog and Magog. No. It's the Quran 